Hello, my name is Dean Wong. I'm an orthopedic surgeon and sports medicine specialist at UC Irvine in Orange County, California. Today, we're gonna show you my technique for posterior lateral corner reconstruction of the knee. I'm typically doing these reconstructions in the setting of a multi-ligament knee injury. The technique that I usually perform is described by our Sierra. It's a figure of eight technique for the posterior lateral corner. The reason I like this technique is because it involves dual fixation with suspensory and aperture fixation on both limbs of the graft. Additionally, with this technique, I use a tension slide method to tension the graft limbs on the same side of my surgery. So the post-lateral corner typically involves various structures on the lateral aspect of the knee, including the lateral collateral ligaments, the popliteal fibular ligaments, and the biceps femoris inserting on the fibular head. So my incision starts from the anterior border of the fibular head over the lateral epicondyle. Take a tongue blade here. So you go through skin and subcutaneous tissue to the level of the IT band here. And we want to develop big flaps anteriorly and posteriorly. Okay. So immediately I want to go find my perineal nerve and dissect it out. So you have a sen retractor. So here's fibular head. And then a pickup. Trying to feel the perineal nerve wrap around the fibular head there. Perineal nerve should be right underneath this biceps here. You want to spend some time on this. You want to get the nerve out of the way so you don't injure it during your posterolateral corner reconstruction. Usually if this is in a chronic setting, I usually will have my um, hand surgeon partners uh, help out with this portion of the case. But if it's fresh, I feel like I'm, you know, the anatomy is um, easy enough to visualize where I can do this uh, confidently. Dissecting out this perineal nerve, I'm just taking my time to make sure it's protected. So I want to get this nerve freed up so that it falls posteriorly when we're doing our work. Usually proximally you can just stick your finger in there and I'll free up all the adhesions. So once I get this vessel loop around it, which makes this part of the case a lot simpler. Okay, so now I have my perineal nerve dissected out and freed and it's falling posteriorly. Here's my fibular head. So I need to know where the nerve is all, at all times. So I'm not injuring it. Okay, so, so next I wanna expose my fibular head. I usually start, up, start off at this biceps bursa, which are right here. I used to start more anteriorly here and found that it was tough to get around these tissues to the back of the fibular head. So uh, this is a key portion. And usually you can take a cob and sort of elevate all these tissues off here. And you get, want to get back to the level of the tip fib joint here in the fibular head. Distally, I want to peel off some of these tissues, this muscle here, so I know I'm starting low enough in my tunnel. I want to make sure that I'm I can stick my finger in the back there. I can feel the tip fib joint. And I can actually feel the posterior proximal tibia as well. You can tag the LCO and incorporate this into your reconstruction. At this point, I want to make sure that I drill my 2.4 millimeter guide wire from anterior lateral to posterior medial uh, in the fibular head. A common mistake is to either start too high or to drill too laterally where you won't get a long enough socket and it can create a thin lateral fibular cortex in which the graft can pull through. So you want to make sure that you're oblique enough sort of this way and heading into the posterior medial aspect of the fibular head. Uh, alternatively, you can use a ACL tibial guide um, to drill this pin. So after I've exposed the fibular head, I make my second window over the epicondyle, the lateral epicondyle here, just to expose the LCL and popliteal attachments. And I should see capsule here. So a lot, oftentimes the capsule is avulsed off and I can repair the capsule. If I see the LCL down here, I can pull on it. In this case, the poster lateral capsule is avulsed off the condyle. So we're gonna repair this with an all suture anchor. This is a 1.8 millimeter VersaLoop um, all suture anchor, double loaded. And we're gonna put it right at the articular margin over here. I'm going to bottom out while we're drilling, leave the guide in place, pop this Versa loop in, tap it all the way until it bottoms out. 
There we go. Unwind these sutures. We can take the guide off here and slowly pull back until it docks. There we go. Nice strong fixation. All right, that's four sutures. And then I snap these sutures and I tie them at the end of the case with the knee in full extension. So I don't capture the knee, give a snap. So here's the LCL and the lateral epicondo. Popliteal insertion you usually find in the anterior aspect of the saddle more distally. So I've identified my popliteal insertion and in the sulcus here in the anterior aspect of the saddle. And I'm gonna shoot a 4.5 millimeter uh, guide pin through. And I want to aim this a little proximally to avoid the roof of the intercontinental notch. So, Next thing we'll do is we'll turn our attention back to the fibular head. So we have to bend the knee here to expose that. We'll take our cob elevator to protect the nerve. And we'll take a center tractor here. Hold that right there. And we'll take our 2-4 um, guide pin, and I want to shoot from anterior lateral to posterior medial. And I want to start at that champagne glass drop off. So about right there. And I usually freehand this. Good. So I have my cob elevator where the guide pin hit. Just want to stick my finger back there to make sure that I like my trajectory. I want to make sure it's oblique enough and it should be pretty close to that tip fib joint there. Next thing we do is we shoot a single floral shot to make sure that our guide pins are in a good place. After we like the position of our guide wires, I'm gonna stick the cob elevator back in the back of the fibular head, again, noting where our nerve is. Then we're gonna ream the seven millimeter reamer on top of the guide wire. Black cortical. We'll clean out all this bone debris here. I like to stick an argyle suction tip through this fits perfectly through just to suck up all the bone dust. Then I'll stick my chia wire through, treat that wire through, and then we'll snap it for later graft passage. Next we'll go back to this popliteal insertion site. So we've already drilled with our 4.5 millimeter spade tip to pass our button. And so we're going to over ream with a 7 millimeter reamer to about 25 millimeters. About 25. You don't want to go too long on this just to save on graft length. We'll go clean out this bone as well. Okay. Then we'll take our tibialis graft. And I love the speed trap for this. For this postalateral corner reconstruction, I like to use a tibialis allograft um, that's at least 25 centimeters in length. Usually the tibialis graft will come already in about seven millimeter diameter. You can also use an Achilles graft for this as well. And then to prep the graft, I like to use a speed trap. This is a super quick method to whip stitch um, the graft. So we'll grab our Alice clamp here. Feed one end through, clamp it down here. And this, you can use a 20 millimeter speed trap. Finishes there. And we have our whip stitch tendon right there. So this is a whip stitch graft. You should have one suture limb that's longer than the other. And this suture limb is going to be the limb that you pass to the screwdriver. So next we're gonna take our titanium rigid loop button. You can tension slide the graft in. You can use the inner holes for this. The outer holes already contain the passing suture. So here's one, pass it through opposite ways. We'll snap these sutures attached to the graft here. So next we'll pass our passing sutures through the eyelet. One, go ahead and pull through. Then we'll pass this button through and dock it on the medial cortex like this. And then so we'll Flip it with the green here, like that. Then using, using tension slide technique, we can dock our graft in here, like that. Good. Then let's take our Milago screwdriver with the screw already loaded. We want to take our longer suture limb, pass it through the chia, which then goes through the screwdriver. We clamp the suture on top of the screwdriver. Then with tension held on the limbs, insert the screw through. Good bite there. Tie the suture limbs over the screw. 
this gives us our dual suspensory and aperture fixation with that interference screw using a tenodesis technique. We have scissors. So this limb is going to go towards the posterior fibula. We'll take a simple dinocord suture and just put a figure of eight through the other aspect of the limb so it makes graft passage easier. Pass our graft down to the fibular head. We have to take another dinocord. Take our cob out of our back, stick in the back of the fibular head. You want to hold that there real quickly? Good. Take our chia. And this graft is going to pass from posterior to anterior through the fibular head. We pass our suture, then we pass our graft. Uh, and we're going to, this recreates the, po the figure of eight construct described by our Sierra. So the LCL origin is slightly proximal and posterior to the lateral epicondyle. So lateral epicondyle is here, LCL is right here. And again, I can pull on this distal limb here to see exactly where it is, it's just right here. So I'm gonna check where my graft is gonna dock. So that's the LCL origin, I'm gonna make a mark right there. And at this point, I can check my isometry to make sure my tunnel is in the anatomic position. So we we'll take that out. I'm gonna fully extend, fully flex, I like that position. Our graft is not moving too much. So oftentimes this is done with an ACL reconstruction. And so to avoid the femoral tunnel of the ACL, as LaProd described, you wanna shoot your pin slightly anterior, about 40 degrees from the ground here. So we have checked our isometry of the graft. We like our position of the LCL femoral socket. Again, I'm gonna drop my pin down to avoid that femoral ACL tunnel. I'm gonna shoot a little proximal as well. Shoot it through the skin here. And I want to ream to about a depth of 40 to 45 millimeters. This ensures that our graph won't bottom out. Next thing we do, I like to put a screw into the fibular tunnel. And so we'll take our 7 by 23 millimeter Milagro Advance biocomposite screw, as we had before. So I have the knee at about 30 degrees of flexion, neutral rotation. We'll pull good tension there. And we're putting in our Milagro. Screw. Final thing we do to prepare the graft, we'll take our speed trap again. And we've marked the position on our graft where we're going to dock it into our socket. Right there. At this point, we can cut off our excess graft here. We want to bullet it so that it feeds into the socket pretty nicely. We'll pass our graft underneath. Okay, good. Then we'll take our rigid loop button and load it in like we did previously. Go ahead and pass through. Mm -hmm. There we go. And again, we'll use our tension slide technique. I want to position the knee at 30 degrees of flexion, neutral rotation, and a slight valgus force. We can turn our screwdriver, put in our 7 by 23 millimeter Milagro Advance. For our tenodesis technique. And that's our posterior lateral corner reconstruction. We have our graft, this recreates the popliteal limb passing through the fibular head. And then we have our graft from the anterior portion to uh, the LCL origin to recreate the LCL limb. And then we'll tie our sutures that we passed through the capsule to placate it. So again, we check our nerve, make sure it's intact, and that completes our posterior lateral corner reconstruction. Typically, I'm performing these reconstructions in a single stage fashion for all ligaments injured in the knee. Postoperatively, patients are allowed full range of motion immediately. They remain touchdown weight bearing for six weeks and progress to full weight bearing afterwards. Typical progression to full activities is around eight months to one year. Thank you so much for watching.